Welcome to part 3 of Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. We're going to the Lost Woods to get two items here. The first item we're going to get is the Heart Container. Now, all you have to do is follow the path that I'm going. Well, not that way, but this way. Cut the grass, fall down the hole, and voila! Heart Container right there. Now, in this cave, you'll also run into this guy right here. He'll tell you about a desert... Uh, uh, bandit in the desert, sorry. And that bandit may be the key to an important item later on. So remember that, folks, because it'll be mentioned again. Anyway, now as we go to the magic mushroom, I just want to warn you guys of one particular enemy, the unbeatable kind. And that is the Bandit. The Bandits will run into you, doing damage to you, as well as... Well, what do you know, the Magic Mushroom. Anyway, they will steal your... Rupees, your bombs, and your arrows. So, if you don't want to run into these guys, it's best to take those fake Master Swords that are around the area and use them to stave off the Bandits, or arrows, one of the two. But we don't have a weapon for that just yet. Right now, we'll be going to the Witch's Hut because we just picked up the Magic Mushroom. And what we're going to be getting from that is probably one of the most important weapons in the game. And that is the Magic Powder. The Magic Powder is definitely useful because, let's face it, you're not going to be able to get through this entire game without it. Well, you will, it's just gonna be harder because there's certain enemies that needs to be, you know, you, you, you just need to use the magic powder on. Let's put it to you like that. Meanwhile, watch out for these choo-choo. You can use your boomerang to stun them and you can slash them. But now that we're here, give the witch the mushroom and just leave the screen for a couple of times and then come back in. But you can come in now and try to get yourself a free sample. Well, not try to get a free sample of red potion. And these are the three potions. Red for health, green for magic, and blue for both. As expensive as it is, I would rather get blue potions. Because trust me, they'll make sure you'll have a lot of rupees to buy blue potions. If you don't have fairies in your bottle, it's best to have blue potions. They are godsends. But unfortunately, I own, I barely had enough to buy one. I have like about 179 rupees. Huh? Wait a minute. Yeah, that's 169 rupees. Sorry. My vision's bad. Anyway, you want to leave the screen, probably twice would do, would actually do the trick. And what you want to do is go back there and go into the witch's hut, but not talk to the witch. I'm just going to ignore that archer and go sh somewhere else right now, because there's a place I forgot to mention in part two that I have completely and totally passed up. Because I was in the urgency of getting to Sahasrala. Anyway. I gotta stop with the anyways. Otherwise, well. I would not be a good commentator, now would I? And I do not want to keep getting hit. No. Getting hit is bad. Anyway. This cave is where you want to go whenever you're taking too much damage. And you don't want to hear the annoying sound of death. There are a lot of caves with great fairies in them. Some of which also contains caves with fairies. These are godsends whenever you don't want to die. It'll keep you in the game longer. And at the same time... There are even some fairies that can upgrade your weapons. Or at least the amount of weapons you hold, one of the two. 
Yeah, I missed with that sign. So let's go back to the witch's shop and get that important item, shall we? It would really do us some good. Now, let us go to the witch's house and not talk to the witch. Okay. Into the house, pass me. Into the house. Thank you. And now we get the magic powder. The magic powder will transform enemies, in, well, some enemies, into weaker versions of themselves. Like, for instance, if I was to sprinkle magic powder on that green choo-choo right now, it would turn into a black choo-choo with glasses. Granted, it'll only take one hit to kill after you hit it with a boomerang, it will still try to electrocute you. No, it will still electrocute you if you hit it. So, be careful of what you do, because some enemies may be made tougher instead of weaker. Now then, let's go to the ferry. It would really help right about now. Oh, and if you're wondering where that fireball is coming from, that's a Zora shooting fireballs at us. Well, at me, actually. Zoras will tend to do that from time to time. And my shield as it is will not be able to deflect them. I gotta get a stronger shield. Anyway, when coming to the Eastern Palace, watch out for Armos statues. The Armos statues will come to life and will attack you. And will not stop until you're dead. Or they're dead, one of the two. So, watch out for the Octoroks here. And the only reason why I activated that statue, because that statue was basically in my way. There was no avoiding it. So, that ought to tell you something. Like, for instance, who's the boss of this particular stage? Oh, God! I did not see that Octorok behind me. Peripheral vision! Anyway... No, no, don't rush! No, don't die! Don't die! We're almost at the stairs! We're almost at the stairs! Ah, damn it. I'll be back, because I gotta start all the way over. Let's try this again! Yeah. Once you die, it's outside of Hyrule, you'll be sent back to either your house or the sanctuary. So anyway, now it's time for the Eastern Palace. This one's not that bad. Actually, it's a pretty fun palace. I mean, try doing this without a guide or anything. That's pretty challenge. It can be pretty challenging. But once you get used to it, with trial and error, you'll know where to go. Like, for instance, you could go to the left, and you can see that treasure chest right there? Damn it, I got hit by a ball. Anyway... You see that treasure chest up there? And all those jars? That's a lot of rupees there. That's definitely a lot of rupees. I am liking this. Whatever you do, don't jump down. Climb back down the way you came. And enter through the door. Duh, it's common sense. Anyway, we want to go to the left first. Actually, you want to go to the right, but I'm going to go to the left because, well, that's how I roll. And as for these annoying jumping skeleton guys, your best bet is to use the boomerang on them. It won't stun them, but it will hurt them. Also, you can pick up jars and hit these skeletons with them. Oh, that sucked. My aim is terrible. Oh, yeah, and by the way, the only reason why it looks like I'm wandering around because my capture card was dropping frame rates for some unknown reason. And now we've got the compass. I could go to the other side and go get the map, but no. 
Instead, past me is going to get greedy right about here. He's gonna try to, you know, skip all the dumb stuff and go straight for the... Well, we can't enter through that door yet. Yeah, that was really stupid. Just keep on going. Yeah, and as you can tell, this is pre-recorded. And he's going sh And of course, I'm going straight for the big key. And unless you guys probably figured it out, I'm going to try to do 100% run here. Probably the only game that I plan on doing 100% run on. Damn it! Uh, those blue bubbles really suck. And you know, there was also an area I forgot to go to. I didn't call them blue bubbles, did I? Yes, I did. I meant to call them anti-fairies. The anti-fairies that just ran into me will take my magic and my health. So, sprinkling magic powder on those guys is a must. And, obviously, going through that key right here would bring us to this area which is across the bridge. So, in case you're wondering where that bridge led, that's the door that it came from. Now, what we need to do here, damn it, is not get hit. And as you can see, the boomerang makes quick work of all these skeleton dudes. What we need to do is clear out the enemies in this room so that the blue baubles can get away from that jar. I called them blue baubles again, didn't I? They sure look like them. From Zelda 2. But anti-fairies, sorry. The anti-fairies get away from the jar. Oh god damn it. These guys. Having this thing run into you is not a good thing. They take a lot of dam- Well, they deal a lot of damage, sorry. These Cyclops monsters. I think I got a few more hits on him and it's dead. Oh, that was close. Now then. I'm really scared because... There we go. Damn it! No, no! Damn it, no! I know I'm trying to sprinkle some magic powder on these guys and I missed them. Oh, that's messed up. Uh, well then, I'm just going to try to get the magic key. I mean a big... Uh, I'll try to get the big key and I die. Yep, that just happened folks. I died twice. So you know what? Screw it. I'm going for the map. I'll get the big key later. Besides, I need to show everybody how to get the map because there's some people who don't want to rely on the map. Well, let me be honest with you folks. You're not going to really get any progress without getting the map and compass in this dungeon. Even though Link to the Past is a better map system than Zelda 2 and Zelda 1, uh, it still is a 16-bit game, after all. And notice, it started me off with 3 health, and only one bar already gone. Now, I, I know you're wondering, how to get over there? I'm about to show you. Just enter through this door here. Watch out for the annoying anti-fairy. Open the door. And go through the door. And voila! There's the map. Just that easy. Now then. I 
will stop and take a break here. Because in the next episode, I'm going to finish off the Eastern Palace in Part 4. This is RVMan985. I can't believe I died twice in one episode. See you guys next time.